want to welcome back meteorologist Mike Slifer. And Mike, I feel like the radar featured the entire color palette today across yeah. the state. We've been all over. We've had yellow, red, heavy rain. We've had pink for sleet and freezing rain. And of course, a lot of blue for snow. Uh, the biggest snow totals, no surprise here, mostly in the mountains. And that's where I think we will continue to see some of the bigger numbers come in. Right now, Rangeley at 7.2 inches. And just before I walked downstairs, there was a report from Coas County, New Hampshire of 10 inches. I did not get to see where, though. But uh, Whitefield, the old report, was 5 inches. Stratton, Maine, came in at 6 inches. Mount Vernon, 1.5 inches. Greenville with 1 inch. And that last bit of snow is moving through right now. We've also got something else to talk about tonight. Something big happens. Uh, and not a lot of people maybe like this, it seems, at least on social media when I was posting about this all week. But we spring forward tonight. So we go from 1.59 a.m. straight to 3 a.m. And when you set the clock, it's always a good idea to check the battery and your smoke detector and your carbon monoxide detectors, too. But back to the weather. We've got snow showers steadily moving through right now. The back edge of this snow in the northeast kingdom of Vermont and traveling along the I-91 corridor in the Connecticut River Valley. That last bit of snow is probably going to be what accumulation or the, what little accumulation we actually see in some areas west of the Penobscot River. We'll be watching this pretty closely because I think that there's a couple of heavier bands in here that might drop like an inch or maybe even two inches as they pass through. This one right here that's about to move across the main turnpike uh, from the Saco Biddeford area south to Wells and Kennebunk. That one is going to probably make things a bit slick when it moves through. Plus, we've got some, uh, some more snow starting to form on the northern edge of that near New Gloucester and up to the Lewiston Auburn area too and tracking along 202 uh, toward Augusta and then over toward the China area as well. And take a look at what's going on north of Bangor right now. We have a bit of a lull in some of the heavier snow, but we had one last push of heavy snow move through with more on the way. So it's snowing right now in Jackman and down 201 toward the Forks. And this is all going to move through Piscataquis County uh, through the um, Katahdin region and then into Penobscot County and likely drop quite a bit of snow with it too, thinking that some of those bands again could approach one to two inches per hour. Underneath these bands, visibility has dropped back quite a bit. So you've got low visibility on the roads, slick conditions as temperatures crash, and that's where we're going to be for the next several hours. By 9 o'clock, we start to see drier air infiltrate and snow showers break up, and everything will clear up by midnight tonight with sunshine on the way for sunrise tomorrow, which again will be an hour later than it was today. And I do think that even though temperatures tomorrow only make it into the 30s for most, maybe even some upper 20s mixed in, the higher sun angle this time of year should allow roads to improve pretty quickly. So slick conditions should be done by 7 or 8 o'clock tomorrow morning. Wind, on the other hand, not the same case. We've got a gust of 38 miles an hour in Bangor right now, 33 miles an hour in Portland, 33 miles an hour in Portsmouth. And if we zoom out, there are some stronger winds off to our west right now, too. And those are all coming out of the northwest. Wind gusts stay elevated overnight tonight, and tomorrow they actually could even be a little bit stronger. We'll have the upper level piece of the storm system swing through, and that's going to bring gusts between about 40 to 45 miles an hour with isolated gusts to 50 miles an hour through the afternoon on Sunday, which means there could be some isolated outages overnight tonight and into the day on Sunday. After all of this is done, though, milder air is quick to return by Monday. We'll actually end up with some milder conditions building in out ahead of a weak cold front on Tuesday. That passes through, maybe a sprinkle with that, and we're back to milder weather for Wednesday and Thursday, and temperatures only increase as we get later into the week. Possible that we could be near 60 degrees in some spots by Friday. Gale warnings in effect right now. Seas 8 to 11 feet tomorrow. Northwest wind 30 to 40 knots with gusts to 50 knots. Your seven-day forecast inland. Uh, we've got decent weather on the way after tomorrow. Tomorrow's going to be cold and windy, especially by March standards. And then by the time we get to St. Patrick's Day, things are certainly trending much warmer. 50s possible inland on Friday, maybe even 60s at the coast. But of course, David, as we always see this time of year, it comes with the price of rain, likely dealing with some sort of storm next weekend. Right now, I think rain, but you never know. Some of those mid-March storms could always wrap up with a bit of snow. Yeah, and a bit of uh, good news, bad news. Tomorrow, I guess, we're getting a little bit of sunshine, but those winds, right? Yeah, we're going to be dealing with winds, power outages, and uh, one of the best ways, of course, to stay updated on the weather is with your phone. 
Take a look at the QR code on your screen right here. This will actually link you directly to our live radar on our website. So you can track along on your phone, see what's going on with the weather, check out road conditions, things like that. Super helpful, especially if you end up in the unfortunate situation of losing power. Very useful information, Mike. Thank you so much. And March is National Women's History Month.